In the last couple of videos, we've um, been using the Kendo grid, but we've been using either hard-coded data or data from just an external file. And what you really want to do, of course, is uh, read and update data that's actually in your database. So I made a database, and I put this person table in my database, and I added some records, Tom, Joe Blow, and Jessica. And I will show you how to get this information into your grid. It's really pretty straightforward. Let's look at the code for the grid. We have the grid and we have some columns with field names, person ID, zip code, first name, and last name. And that corresponds to this person model I'm using where I have a person ID, a first name, last name, zip code, and we have a birthday, but I'm not really dealing with the birthday in this example. Um, so those define the columns and those define the data and the data source, instead of the URL being, you know, some URL out there, um, what I've done is I said we're going to go to the person controller and run the read function. So here's the person controller, and it's just these three lines. You know, here's the read, right? Person read, read, and this is going to my data access layer and looking, you know, calling the store procedure, getting the data. All I have to know is that what this returns is a list of this object. And then I just return that object. Now the important thing is to have this second parameter here. Um, without it, it's not going to work. So just believe me, you need this JSON behavior, request behavior. And I'm going to run it and prove to you that, oops, that this indeed works. So given that my computer is from a different era, this might take a couple seconds to fire up, but we'll get it. Okay, so we land on the, you know, when you create a project in Visual Studio that comes with this page here, but we're going to go to the person controller we created. It uh, makes this grid for us, and it makes this grid – oops, I got a breakpoint on it. Um, so you can see that it, it did go to the read function and it looked it up. My object has three records in it, like you would think, and there they are. And that's all there is if you want to look up the info and bind it to a grid. But of course that's not particularly useful, you need to update the info. So I will show you how to do that. If you want to update it, first you need some sort of update button. And that's easy to make. You just create another column, a command column. Command column of type edit. And then you give it a name. You can give it any name you want, but I'll give it action. And if I save it, and I run it, reload it, we should see a new column with buttons in it. There they are. They don't really do anything. What we want them to do is give us some inline editing. Once, once again, it's easy. You go back to your grid and you say, I want it to be editable and I want it what kind of editable? Inline. Don't forget your comma save it, reload it, and now when I hit edit, look, our rows become editable. I can change Joseph Blow to Joe Blow and update. But here's the thing, when I hit update nothing happens, the page doesn't refresh, we have to add something else to this. So I'm going to hit cancel. And after our data source, we'll say comma, say save, colon, I'm sorry, yeah, colon, function, why can't I spell function, function, and all we're going to do is say this dot uh, refresh. And so when we hit the update button and it's done updating, then it'll refresh the page. So I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to reload the page and prove it. Edit. Change it.
gives Joseph to Joe update. Hey, look, it's Joe Blow. And you're like, that's awesome, Tom. Is that all there is to updating a database? No, <laughs> because we didn't really update the database. That was all done on the client side. If we go back to the database, uh, oh, I got to log back in. Uh, hold on a second. So I'm going to log in, and I want you to see my password. Oh, actually, I think the reason was because I had person highlighted, and so when I executed it, it I thought it was because it logged me out. Anyway, let me unselect person and execute, and you can see now he's... Oh, right, my point was um, that I changed it to Joe, and it looks like it got changed to Joe, but really on the back end it didn't. I didn't call the database or anything. It's all client side. So we want to actually, when we update, we want to actually update. So let's add update. And our URL is going to, once again, be the person controller. But now we're going to call update. And this is a post. Okay, and now I got squiggly lines and my brackets are all screwed up and that's because I forgot the comma. And these commas and brackets will be the death of you if you're not careful. Okay, so what does this mean? When I do an update, call the um, controller and call the update function. So let's see if that works. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to reload the page. You see we're back to Joseph because I never really changed. I'm going to change it to Joe. And do I have a breakpoint on this? Yeah, I got a breakpoint on the update. And uh, update. It didn't call, right? It didn't call our update function. So why didn't it call it? Well, there's one more thing we have to do. On top of having a data source, you have to have a schema. Now, I'm about to screw up. The schema doesn't go outside. The schema goes within the data source brackets here. Schema. And that schema has a model. And the one thing you have to have is the ID. You have to define what the ID is. In this case, it's the person ID. You have to put all your brackets back. And then you have to put your comma in place. Now, now that I have said that this is the ID, it should work. We should hit update. It should say, oh, I know what update means. It means to call this, and then it should gather all our info and call the data access layer and update it all and blah, blah, blah. So let's see if that works. Save it and reload it. And now we're really going to change his name to Joe Blow. Joe Blow. Update. See, we've called the update. Now, see how smart this is? It knows that person ID is 2 because we defined it as the ID for this grid, person ID. So it's 2. So what I'm doing is I'm saying the ID is 2, ID is 2, and then I just get all these requests like the zip code, the first name, the last name, it all comes in this request object. So those are all those values. I call the uh, data access layer. I have a, as you can imagine, a function that calls the stored procedure, updates the stored procedure, and now his name is Joe, for real. How do we know it's for real? Because when I go to the database and run it, see, his name actually changed to Joe in the database. So that's it, man. Um, you define the columns, and you defined the uh, transport read as um, you know the read function in your controller and then you can populate your database I'm sorry you can populate your grid and then if you want to update you just add a command column and you say inline editable you add this to call your um, controller remember you gotta have this schema here the save um, function just refreshes your grid and if you're good at uh, the back end stuff, tying it into your database, you are good to go.
So, good luck.